My name is Laurie Fultz, and I'm going to be doing my physical assessment on David Fultz. Um, we'll start out with, David, are you having any chest pain? No. Shortness of breath? No. Um, how many pillows do you sleep on at night? One. Any problems laying flat? No. Any recent cough? No. Um, do you, have you smoked in the past? No. Are you a current smoker? No. Okay, very good. We're going to start out, um, we'll be doing the um, nervous system, the heart and lungs, um, the neck, and the thorax. Um, we'll start out with the cranial nerves. Um, olfactory is cranial nerve one, and we won't be testing that, but that would be smell. Cranial nerve two is the optic nerve, and we'll check that um, by having you cover your right eye, and I'll cover my left eye, and let me know how many um, fingers I'm holding up. Two. One. Two. Okay. We would do the same thing for the other eye, but we're... We won't do it to save some time. Um, cranial nerve three is the ocular motor. Four is the trochial, trochular. And um, cranial nerve six is the abducent. Um, we can check that by looking at the um, corneal, corneal light reflex, seeing if they're the same in both eyes. I'm going to hold my, my light about 12 inches from the face and his looks good. Um, then I'm going to have you, I'm going to cover one eye. I better use this again. So the light's not the best. I'm going to look straight at my nose. I'm going to remove my finger and I'm just going to um, see if your eye moves at all and it doesn't. Look at my nose. It stays the same. If it would move that would show us signs that um, he had some muscle weakness. Um, cranial nerve 5 is the trigeminal nerve, and we can check that by palpating here. How, can you um, bite down? And I'm just feeling if um, there's symmetry on both sides, which there is. Um, the other thing that um, we can do is use a cotton swab, and um, I'm going to have you close your eyes. Just tell me with the word now when you feel this on your face. No. 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 Very good. Um, cranial nerve seven is the facial nerve. Um, can I get you to smile for me? Frown. Show me your teeth. Can you lift your eyebrows? Yeah. Close your eyes. Very good. Um, the other thing we can do is have you puff out your cheeks. And I'm just going to feel, and yes, they feel like um, they're equal on both sides. Um, cranial nerve 8 is the acoustic nerve. And do you have problems hearing normal conversation? No. How about if I with, you have a hard time understanding? No. Very good. Cranial nerve 9 is the glossopharyngeal. And 10 is the vagus nerve. Um, what we would do for that is use a tongue compressor, have him open his mouth, have him say ah, uh, and I'm looking for the rise of the uvula or and the soft, soft palate. Um, we could also test the gag reflex, but we won't be doing that. Um, cranial nerve 11 is the spinal accessory nerve. Um, can you shrug your shoulders for me? And they're equal on both sides. Um, can you move your head side to side? Good job. Uh, cranial nerve 12 is the hypoglossal nerve. Uh, can you stick out your tongue for me? Very good. Um, the other thing you can do is have them say a few words. You want to see if the um, L, the T, and the D are clear. Can you say the word light? Light. Tight. Tight. Dynamic. Dynamic. And they are all clear. So. The um, cranial nerve is intact. Um, the next thing we can do is check the bicep reflex. I don't have a hammer, but what you would do is just have him um, lay his forearm on your forearm to rest and um, put your, your um, thumb here at the brachial area and then 
hit the hammer on your thumb and feel for the contraction. Uh, for the tricep, you're going to have him relax his elbow. You can rest the hand here on, on um, your hand and hit right below the, the elbow and you would feel the contraction. All right, next we'll check the patella. Um, I'm going to um, have him dangle his leg and then I would take the hammer and hit it right below the patella um, and, and watch the extension of his leg. All the deep tendon reflexes, you're going to want to um, do both sides. Inspection, I'm gonna look at his neck and his chest. I'm gonna be looking at the skin color. I'm gonna be um, looking at the respiratory rate. Is it between 14 and 20? I'm gonna be looking, is he breathing, um, is his breathing regular? Um, is he putting effort into breathing? Is he using his accessory muscles? Um, I'm gonna look at the configuration of his chest. Is he barrel chest? Um, that type of thing that all can affect cardiac output. Um, then we're going to palpate the uh, precordium and you do that by taking your hand and laying it over the apex of the heart and feeling for any thrills or vibrations. And then here at the left sternal border and then here at the base of the heart. And then I'm going to uh, feel for the apical pulse, which is right under the nipple, about the um, fifth intercostal space, mid-clavicular line. Um, I'm going to have him turn his head to the left, and then I'm going to palpate the uh, carotids, and I'm just going to make sure both pulses are synchronized. Okay. Um, Next, I'm going to um, check the posterior um, aspect of his chest. And by doing this, I'm going to have him take a deep breath and inhale, and I'm going to feel the rise of the chest. You just keep breathing normal. Inhale. Is, is he breathing? Um, equal on both sides. Um, and you just want to move your hands upward. You could do that to the front of the anterior portion of his chest also. Um, then I'm going to have um, do tactile fe femoris. Um, you're going to use the bony edge of your hand and you're going to um, start at the um, top of his chest and move down and have him say 99 and you're just going to feel the vibrations 99 99 you could do the same thing on the back um, just feeling for um, if if the vibration is different. Um, in the chest, you want to do about five different areas on each side of the chest. Um, you can also palpate for respiratory excursion. You do that posteriorly. And um, what you're going to do is uh, have him inhale. Hold on a second. Sorry. We live... Um, in the country, so we have tractors going by. Um, I'm going to percuss down his back. I'm going to have him uh, inhale for me, and um, then I'll palpate. And then I would mark the spot that, that um, you hear a, a change or a dullness in the percussion. And then what we'll do is have him inhale and hold it.
and we would mark it there. And um, that's a, a, you, you start to hear around T10, the, the difference. <coughs> um, it should be equal on both sides. You take those two lines that you drew and they should be about three to five centimeters and they should be equal on both sides. Um, when you're percussing the posterior chest, it's about nine areas you should be um, percussing and same with auscultation on each side, nine on each side. And then um, when you auscultate for lung sounds, you want him to be sitting in a comfortable position, kind of leaning forward a little bit. Um, you want him to have his hands rested on his lap. Uh, anteriorly, we hear mostly the upper lobes. Posteriorly, you hear more of the lower lobes. The right side of the, the right lung has three lobes. The left lung has two lobes. Anteriorly, you hear um, the upper lobe above the clavicle and the second and third um, intercostal space. The middle um, lung is the fourth and fifth intercostal space and um, the lower lung is um, around the sixth, fifth and sixth intercostal space. When you're listening to posteriorly, C7 to T3 is the upper lobe and T4 to T10 is the lower lobe. When we're listening, auscultating for our breath sounds, you hear bron bronchial um, breath sounds anteriorly. Um, you hear them greater on expiration and mainly in the tracheal larynx area. Bronchovascular um, is anteriorly. You hear those in the first and second intercostal space. And then vascular, um, you hear anteriorly, posteriorly, and lateral, and they're the peripheral lung sounds. We can also um, do egophy, which is um, when you have your patient say the letter E. If there's any consolidation in the lung, then it would, it would, you would hear it as A in your stethoscope. E, 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 E. And you would do that back and forth, and you can do that also posteriorly. Um, when you're auscultating for carotids, you want to use the bell of your stethoscope. I'm going to have him inhale, exhale, and hold it. Breathe. Inhale, exhale, and hold it. I'm just listening for um, any brewery, um, and then we'll listen for heart sounds. Uh, that's um, S1 and S2 in all the areas, and the areas that we'll be listening to are the aortic, which is in the um, about the second intercostal space, and then the pulmonic, which is in the second intercostal space, left sternal border. Um, S2 is typically heard louder in the aortic and the pulmonic. And then we'll listen to Herb's point. That's the third intercostal space, and it's close to the sternum. And then we'll listen to the tricuspid between the fourth and the fifth intercostal space, the mitrals in the fifth intercostal space. And typically we hear S1 louder in the tricuspid and the mitral area. And you want to listen with your stethoscope. Put the diaphragm. And then I'll also will take the breath sounds in the back. Deep breath, in and out.
Okay, good. Um, and then we'll have him lay down um, and we will listen to the same heart sounds, uh, the atrial or the aortic pulmonic herbs point, tricuspid and mitra with the bell of the stethoscope. We're listening for any S3 and S4s. You typically can hear them best when you're laying on your left lateral side. Um, and then we'd be listening for any murmurs, which is a blowing or swishing sound. And then we'll check the plantar um, reflex. Uh, a normal Babinski sign for an adult would be um, when you run your um, pen or a stick up the lateral side of the foot and curl around to the toes, so kind of like an upside down J, um, their toes should curl in. If they flare out, that's a positive Babinski. And for children under the age of two, their feet should flare out. Okay, we'll try and spin this over. And so I'm going to listen with the bell of my stethoscope. I'm listening for the S1 and S2 also, but S4 is typically heard. And murmurs are typically heard this way because the apex of the heart is closer to the skin. And then we'll just do the plantar reflex. I'm just gonna go up and curl. Yep, we'll do it one more time, like that. When checking the cranial nerves, or when checking the um, reflexes, um, the plantar reflex is uh, test L4 to S2. The bicep reflex is to test C5 uh, to C6. The tricep reflex is to test C7 to C8. Um, and the plantar reflex is, um, or the patellar reflex is to test L2 to L4. Um, S2, when you're listening to heart sounds, is louder in the aortic and pulmonic, and S1 is typically heard louder in the mitro and the tricuspid. Thank you very much for watching my um, video on my assessment.